Quick recap, my dad has been dealing with some serious health problems and it reminded me how fragile our time on this earth really is. So we decided to tame my parents' jungle, or what most people would call a backyard, to provide a place where my family can make memories with the time we have left with our parents. So far we have done some landscaping, including cutting down this diseased pine tree, getting rid of this massive wood pile, and sorting through and getting rid of this old storage tent that fell apart over the years. Now we are cleaning out the shed which hasn't been sorted through in almost 30 years and we have found some cool chests. Finally part two. Here's the thing, I uploaded part two with part one, it was doing great for about a month, and then YouTube flagged it for copyright because I used like 10 seconds of a song, and then it took the video down. Which is ridiculous. And since it had already been a month, I deleted it from my Final Cut library, so I didn't have a project to re-edit. But thank freaking goodness I had it on one of my external hard drives, and I was just in the process of re-editing it when I lost my job. The government's making a bunch of cuts because of COVID, and so I was laid off. So I moved my family all the way from Alberta, Canada, five-day drive across the country to Toronto to take a sales job for the summer to feed my family. So I'm I'm sorry it has taken such a long time to get part two out, but I mean, I've been a little busy. And for everyone who's wondering why it was filmed in portrait mode, it's because I originally filmed this for a TikTok series. So yes, that means part two is of course in portrait mode. Now it would mean the world to me if you wanted to show your support by purchasing some of my merchandise. This is one of my hats here with my hook logo on it, and then I have a bunch of shirts and hoodies with positive and motivational sayings on it. And it's gonna be linked in the description below to my uh, online store. Honestly, that would help me out so much. Now, before we get going here, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for all your support. I never thought part one would get to this many views, so thank you, thank you. And without further ado, let's watch part two. This was a hope chest made for my grandma by my grandpa in 1920. It was full of family heirlooms, which included my grandmother's finest china and two real silverware sets. My parents had no idea the stuff was in there and it was so cool to see my dad and mom reminisce over things they haven't seen for almost 30 years. We also found old family photos. This shed was basically like opening a time capsule. It's just unfortunate so many mice had to take a dump on all this good stuff. Next, we went through this blue chest that looked like the boss key chest from Zelda so you know it had to have something good. Definitely not what I expected. It was a lot of old clothes and some cool beaded moccasins, which is interesting. I'll have to do some digging into the story behind those and do a separate video about them. So we kept digging and unfortunately because of the leaky roof, a lot of stuff was destroyed and had to be thrown out. These crates were filled with wheat for grinding into flour, but it was mostly all rotten. Except one crate was full of my grandmother's yarn because she liked to knit stuff apparently. You see, my grandmother died when I was a baby, so I never knew her. So this was really cool for me to go through her stuff and learn so much about her. We continue on and didn't find much besides things with sentimental value. Finally, after a lot of sorting, we found the mother load. As we went through boxes, we found my uncle's stash of coins. Not just any coins, oh no. Silver and collector's coins. Arr, this be the loot. I was looking for, haha. <laughs> Except my dad said we should return them to my uncle. Dang you, integrity and honesty. So our pockets may be empty, but our consciences are clean. And then we found this old film canister with the coins. It was pretty heavy and it sounded like metal was inside. So what could it be? Gold, silver, who freaking knows? And, oh geez, just, just brass figurines, nothing to see here. <clears throat> Anyways, my dad continued sorting through the pile while my brother and I moved these glass doors up to his shop. While we were working, we heard some buzzing coming from the roof and discovered some yellow jacket wasps flying around. And on closer inspection, oh geez, yeah, definitely a nest up there. Now for those of you who don't know, yellow jacket wasps are not the fun loving honey making bees that we all adore. These are yellow and black striped winged spawns of Satan. So I'm sorry, but they have got to go. Luckily my dad, who is the master of all trades, has a bee suit because we used to have beehives. So my brother chose the short straw and has suited up in my dad's old bee suit to wage war. Now that they are gone, we can get back to work without the fear of being stung. Once we got the shed cleared out, it was time to start tearing it down. I know a lot of people suggested fixing it up, but it's just too badly damaged and full of crap. Quite literally, so it wouldn't be worth it. I went to work cutting down the walls with a sawzall and removed the back wall completely. 
Oh, nasty. Look at this. No wonder there were so much mice. All the walls were stuffed with yellow cotton candy, and you can see all the mouse burrows through the stuff. <laughs> My plan was to knock down this wall and have the shed sort of implode on itself. So I sawed through the wall and kicked it in like a savage. And then check this out. These are carpenter ants and this is how they got their name. You can see how they eat and carve out tunnels in the wood. They are just like termites and if you see them around your house, exterminate them and do it quick because they do a ton of damage. Now I was ready to knock it over. I pushed and pushed and pushed but this baby was not coming anytime soon. So I hooked onto the roof and used my big old butt to pull down and boom, it fell over. Oh great, now what? I must have fallen out of the stupid side of bed this morning cause how the heck am I gonna get it down now? Freaking smooth move, x -Lax. I got to figure out how to knock this wall down so I don't get crushed. My wife had already come so close to losing me once and she was not happy about the situation. I cut the wall to make it weak and decided that in order to distance myself from it, I would take a page from Thor's book and throw my hammer. Two throws and boom. That was cool but not worth almost giving my wife a heart attack. We continued dismantling the shed and I was grateful for my brother and dad's help because there was a lot of wood to move and a ton of cotton candy. My son is gonna have a wild birthday party. Finally, after several days of sorting through stuff and dismantling, the shed is gone. Honestly, I never thought I would see the day when this would happen. And I gotta say, it feels pretty freaking incredible to have it gone. And I'm sure the neighbors enjoy their view a lot more. Now we just need to tie up some loose ends before the backyard is fully finished. One of those loose ends was this four inch thick concrete pad that used to be an entrance into an old root cellar. Unfortunately, we didn't have the money to rent an excavator so I decided to call upon Thor, the God of Thunder, to help me. I felt that with all the work I had done for my parents so far that I would be worthy of the power. Of course, safety first. Well then, I guess I'm not worthy. Freak's sake! Man, this is gonna take all freaking day. So I turned to science and used a little ingenuity by digging a hole under the pad and putting a car jack underneath. That way I could lift up the pad, making it easier to break. And after only a few hits, it cracked into pieces. We are so close, but have this stupid thing standing in our way. This pole was used to hold up a big old C-band satellite dish. Now, typically people would dig a hole and then throw cement in. Not my dad. He didn't want to spend money on cement, so instead he decided to make our life way harder by welding pieces of scrap metal onto it for anchoring. Although it was genius for anchoring, it made it harder to remove because we had to work around this metal and it was super awkward. Not only that, but it went pretty far down. But then again, I've always wanted to visit China, so I'm just super grateful for my brother and my nephew's help because this would have sucked to do on my own. We finally got down to what we thought was the bottom, but the post would not budge. So I said, to heck with it, and wrapped a chain around it and decided to pull it out with my truck. Unfortunately, it was pulling it sideways rather than up. So I wrapped the chain around the bottom and used some scrap casing to direct the force up rather than sideways. And it worked like a charm. Science! And you can see why this was so hard to dig out of the ground. I mean, what a freaking nightmare. Oh, hey, look, a fork. Fork you! Afterwards, we did a final rake to clean up all the small garbage and the brice, I mean debris, I mean debrisis, eh, one of those. Finally, after two months of work, after 30 trailer loads taken to our town dump, after me splitting the butt out of two pairs of pants and destroying a pair of shoes, and after capturing over 250 gigabytes worth of footage, we are finally finished. And in pretty dang good timing as well because literally the day after we finished, boom. Mother Nature decided to take a dump on us and left us in a winter wonderland. Honestly, I can't tell you how good it feels to see this backyard clean. In my entire 28 years of existence, this backyard has never been clutter free and it is exhilarating to see what our months of hard work has done. This yard is now a blank slate with so many possibilities. We could add on to the cabin and build an awesome play place for kids with a fire pit. We could do a huge garden. We could do a swimming pool. We could do a swimming pool, garden, treehouse, play area with a fire pit. The possibilities are endless. What do you think we should do? I know first off we need to plant some grass because this is ugly. Now, don't go too far because when the weather gets nice again, it will be time to start cleaning out my parents' garage.